clan of rabbits to wealth. Gather your resources, build buildings, and collect the golden carrots. Do you want to learn how to play Bunny Kingdom? In this video, we're going to take you through the full rules of the game, and if you stay tuned till the end, you can pick up some tips and strategies along the way. Coming up. bringing you a variety of quality board game videos. Now let's get to the rules of Bunny Kingdom, game by Richard Garfield, published by Yellow. Game courtesy of VR Distribution Australia. Bunny Kingdom is a card drafting and area control game in which players represent rabbit lords attempting to get the greatest control over the new world that they can. Through the game, players will be drafting cards which tells them where they can place their bunnies and what sort of buildings they can build into their new fiefs. Players will also be drafting some endgame objectives to gain some extra points. Players will gain most of their points by creating valuable fiefs, that is a collection of connected territories with the player's bunny on it which has both strength represented by these cities and lots of different types of resources represented by these icons. The game plays over four rounds all fiefs are scored in each round, and the player who is able to gain the most points by the end of the game is the winner. To set up the game, each player takes all of the bunny figures in his or her colour, placing one of them onto the zero space of the score track. On each of the city spaces on the board, that's this one showing a city wall, the players should set one of these single strength city markers, that's the one with a single spire, into that space. There should be 18 such cities. All of the rest of the plastic city pieces and all of the cardboard building pieces go next to the board ready for use. Finally, shuffle up the full deck of cards, put them near the board, and you're ready to play. The game is played over four rounds, and each round is broken into three phases. First, a card draft. Then, the building phase, in which players will build any buildings they've drafted onto the board and then a scoring phase in which players will score for any of the fiefs that they've built onto the board. After all rounds are complete, players will score any endgame objectives that they've drafted out of the pile, and the player with the highest score wins. So now let's look at each of these three steps in detail. First we'll talk about the card draft, and the number of cards drafted depends on your player count. 10 in a 2 or 4 player game, and 12 in a 3 player game. For the moment, we're only going to talk about the three and four player rules. We'll come back to the two player rules at the end of the video. To begin the drafting phase, each player is dealt 10 cards in a four player game, or 12 cards in a three player game. Simultaneously, players look through all of the cards they've been dealt, and then, among them, choose any two which they wish to keep and play. These are separated from the others. Then, all players will play these cards. This can be done simultaneously, but the way each card is resolved will vary, and I'll talk about this shortly. Then, the player hands all of the remaining cards off to a neighbour, either to the left in an odd-numbered round, or to the right in an even-numbered round. The player will receive the same number of cards from the other neighbour. This process then repeats, with the player again looking through those cards, choosing two that he or she wishes to play, all players playing them simultaneously, and then the cards being handed off again. This process continues until there are no cards left being passed around. Next, we'll talk about how to play cards. There are four different types of cards in the game. The first is a territory card. This will show a grid reference up in the top left-hand corner. When you play one of these cards, you immediately place one of your bunny figures into the matching grid reference on the board. So in this case, it would go into H4. If that territory produces a resource, the card will also tell you that in the top middle icon. If you play a territory card which represents one of the cities that was placed on the board in setter, you'll see this through this one strength icon, which represents the one strength of that city. Once again, by playing this card, you would take your bunny figure and then place it into the matching grid reference, 
in this case putting it inside that city. All hundred of the territory cards in the game would be resolved in this manner. The second type of card you may come across is a building card. This can be identified by having a shield icon up in the top left corner. When you play a building card, you will take the matching building piece and then place it onto that card. If the building shows one of the numbers, this will be one of the plastic pieces. If the building shows an icon, this will be one of the cardboard pieces showing that matching shield. You do not place these on the board yet. This is done during the building phase of the round. There are sufficient building pieces available in the game to match all of the building cards that could come out of the deck. The third type of card that you may come across is a parchment card, and this can be identified by having a parchment drawn on the card. These come in two types, treasure cards, which show this icon and are simply worth victory points at the end of the game, and mission cards, which give you some sort of an objective, which will give you extra points depending on how well you complete it. To play a parchment card, you simply announce that you have a parchment card and then leave it face down. Players will always be able to see how many parchment cards you have, but won't know what they are. And these will stay in their pile until the end of the game. The final type of card is the provisions card. And when playing a provisions card, this simply allows you to draw two cards off the top of the deck and then play them immediately. These are played in whatever way this sort of card would normally be played. All cards that a player plays, other than parchment cards, will go into a personal discard pile, which allows the player to go back and refer to them later during the game. After the drafting phase is complete, play passes to the building phase, in which players have the opportunity to build any buildings they've collected during the round. A couple of general rules about building. To place a building, the player takes a building from one of the cards and then moves it into any one of the territories currently controlled by his or her bunny. Each territory may hold no more than one building, including the one that started on the board. This is true whether it's a plastic piece or a cardboard piece, so this building could not be built here. Buildings, once they're placed, are permanent. You can never move, upgrade or destroy them. Furthermore, players are not required to use all of their buildings in the same round that they drafted them. This player could hold any or all of these buildings back, leaving them on the cards until a future round's building phase in order to find a better placement. All players will do their building placement phases simultaneously. Now I'll talk about each of the types of buildings in detail. The first type of building is a city, and that's one of these plastic figures represented by the number. The number represents the strength of that city, and strength is a key element for scoring your thieves. To place one of these, simply move it underneath a bunny that's already in a territory. There are no restrictions on the placement of level 1 or level 2 cities. However, as indicated by this icon here, a level 3 city can be placed only onto a mountain space. This means that although they are the most valuable from a pure points perspective, they will go into locations which are a bit more restricted than the other ones on the board. The next type of building that you may come across are the farms that produce the basic resources in the game, carrots, wood and fish. These, once again, can be placed without restriction into any territory on the board. Once placed, it counts as if that territory now produces that type of goods. You can even place one of these into a territory which already produces goods of its own, and this territory will now produce two different types of resources. Fiefs will score points based in part on the total number of different resources produced there, and so this can be a good way of scoring extra points for your fiefs. Similar to those farms is the trading station, which shows all three of the basic resources in the corner. This again can be placed without restriction, and then, during the scoring phase, this can be counted as if it produces any one of the three basic types of goods. You can choose which type, and you can switch to a different type from round to round. The next type of building are the luxury resource farms, and these are shown using one of the seven unique luxury resources in a black shield in the top corner. We're showing you only three here, but there are a total of seven in the game. 
The difference between these resources and the basic resources in the game is that each has a restriction on where it can be placed. The diamond mine, for example, can only be placed into a mountain territory. Because all of these are unique, they will always add to the variety of resources in a given fief, so they can be quite valuable to draft. But you need to have a suitable location in order to place them down. The next type of building is the Sky Tower, and there are three Sky Tower cards in the game. When you take a Sky Tower card, you get to take two building pieces rather than one. These need to be the same colour. There are three different pairs in different colours. Sky Tower buildings can be placed without restriction, and the two matching Sky Tower pieces are considered to be adjacent on the board. This can be an effective way of joining multiple fiefs together into one larger, higher scoring fief. For example, without the Sky Tower, this would be considered two separate fiefs of four territories. With the Sky Tower, it's one big fief of eight. The final type of building is the camp, and there are six camps in the game, numbered from one to six. Camps disobey a lot of the other rules of building placement, so I'll go through their rules specifically. When placing a camp, it must be placed onto an empty territory containing no bunnies. You then add one of your own bunnies to that territory. This is another way that you can join multiple fiefs together without having the specific territory card that you would need to join it naturally. Most building placements in the game are done simultaneously, because players are only ever dealing with their own territories. However, with camps, because all empty territories are open, the camp order matters. In this case, you will go in the numerical order of the camps, so whoever has camp number one gets the first placement, then camp two, and so on. This should resolve any timing disputes with respect to placing camps. Unlike other buildings, camps are not necessarily permanent, because there is still a territory card out there, potentially, which matches the grid reference of your camp. If you play that card yourself, simply remove the camp from the board, freeing up that territory to take another building. However, if it's an opponent that plays that card, not only is the camp removed, but so is your bunny, as the other player takes over that territory. Therefore, while camps can be a good way of joining your territories together, it's not necessarily permanent, and so you want to be careful about hinging your whole strategy on camps. Even if you lose your camp off the board, you'll still have the camp card in your discard pile, because there are some endgame objectives that relate to the number of camp cards you have, not the number of camps you have on the board. After the building phase is finished for all players, proceed to the scoring phase, in which players will score all of their fiefs. A fief is any block of orthogonally adjacent territories which is occupied by the same player. So, this fief here, containing these two bunnies, is separate from this fief because they're joined diagonally, not orthogonally. Additionally, within all of the mountain ranges, you will see strips of lava, and fiefs are disconnected by lava. In other words, these five bunnies here represent one fief, and these three bunnies represent another, separated by that lava. So you will find all of your fiefs and then score each of them separately. The number of points scored by a fief is equal to its strength multiplied by its wealth. Its strength is equal to the strength of all of the cities in that fief, which is the number of towers on the city pieces. Its wealth is equal to the total number of different resources produced in that fief. So that's either these shields printed on the board, or any shields printed on buildings within that fief. So, this fief here has a strength of 2 and 2 different resources, and so produces 2 by 2 is 4 points. This fief here has a strength of 3 and produces 2 sets of carrots, which is only 1 different resource, and therefore it produces 3 times 1 is 3 points. This fief here has a strength of 1 and 1 type of resource, so it produces 1 point. And this fief here has 1 resource but 0 strength, and so it produces no points. Connecting your fiefs with sky towers can be an effective way of increasing their points. In this case, these 5 bunnies are now in a single fief, 
which produces two types of resources and has a strength of three. So now, instead of being worth three and zero, they're collectively worth six points. As the game wears on, players will use sky towers and other territories that they acquire to meld smaller fiefs together into larger, higher scoring fiefs. This 11 bunny fief in this case now has a strength of 5 and a wealth of 3 for a total of 15 points. All players will score all their fiefs in this manner at the end of each of the 4 rounds. After the 4th round scoring is complete, the game is over and all that remains is to resolve players' parchment cards. Any treasure cards that the player has gained is simply worth victory points and the player gains those points for the card. Any mission cards that the player has collected will be worth a different number of victory points depending on the condition stated on it. For example, here the player gains one point for each territory controlled on the edge of the board, and so, based on what you can see on the screen, the player would gain an extra three points. There are some important differences between scoring these cards and scoring at the end of different rounds. And in particular, it's that each resource on the board will count separately, whereas in the scoring at the end of the round, you're only going to count each type of resource once if it's within the same fief. What do I mean by that? Here, the player gains one victory point for each carrot produced, which is one, two, three, and if the player had used this for carrots in the fourth round, four, for a total of four points. However, when scoring all of those carrots in the final round's proper scoring, this would only count as a single type of resource and would only have counted once to that fief. I won't go through all of the different parchment cards in this video, but there are a few special ones which are clarified on page 11 of the rulebook. The player with the highest score wins, and if tied, victory is shared. The draft in the two-player version of the game works a little bit differently in order to balance the attacking and defensive strategies in a two-player game. To start each round, each player is dealt two different hands of ten cards. This one is called the player's hand, and then there's a pile known as the reserve. At the start of each round of drafting, each player takes the top card from his or her reserve and adds it to his or her hand. Then. The player looks through his or her hand, chooses one card to play instead of two, and chooses one card to discard from the game face down. Both players will make this choice. The discarded cards that go face down are not put in the player's personal discard pile, because that represents cards the players have played. They're simply put off to the side and not used again in the game. Then players exchange their hands, like so, and the process repeats, with each player adding another card from the reserve, choosing one card to play, and discarding one of them. This continues until each player has played 10 cards. And that's how to play Bunny Kingdom. We hope that you enjoy the video, and we hope that you enjoy playing. Thanks to Fiat Distribution, an exclusive distributor of this game in Australia, to provide us with a copy of the game Bunny Kingdom. If you'd like to find out what we think of the game, we have a review video, and you can check that out by clicking on the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by hitting the like button, write your questions or feedback in the comment sections below. You can also join our Facebook group, Meeple University Community, to share your love for board games. And finally, if you'd like to be among the first notified of what's new from us, please consider subscribing to our channel. You can click on the meeple up in the corner to do so, and do hit the bell to be notified of new material. Until next time!